it's Auntie Kim and it's Auntie Kisses from around the entire world. Today I have the privilege to be interviewing Shandy Plutzker. Shandy, how you doing? I am doing great. I am obsessed with your positive energy. How, first, how old are you? I'm 14. Okay, you're going to take over the world and I'm so excited to watch it happen. I am so excited to be here speaking with you and I guess uh, for a lot of Tadikas to hear. Um, what's going on? Amazing. But I'm, all right. Can you please share with us a little bit about yourself, your hobbies, what do you enjoy doing, a little bit about your background? Let's hear. You just signed up for the longest Megillah in the world because when people ask me a question, I, I so I'll, I'll, I'll keep it as, as uh, short <laughs> as I can and you stop me whenever you want. Uh, a little bit about myself. Hi, everyone. My name is Shandy Plotzker. I am uh, a person living in Muncie, New York. I'm actually sitting in my car. I, I sit in my car a lot. Um, and I, I'm a singer and a songwriter and a performer. Uh, I hope to be uh, able to spread beautiful messages throughout the world through my music and through you know connecting with different people positive messages positive energy um hopefully uplifting and inspirational messages i grew up in england and moved to america when i was seven and now i don't have an accent anymore but i used to no um, way uh, oh my gosh yeah <laughs> i live uh, in muncie new york right now and i love it and uh what else uh, some of my other hobbies that people maybe don't know about. Give me one second. Sorry. Sorry, someone just called me for a second. Um, some of my other hobbies that people might not know about. I actually love to draw. I used to draw portraits when I was uh, in school and seminary. I spent a lot of time drawing. Whoa. Um, I also love to dance pretty much as much as I love to sing. So um ironically like when I was in high school I was always in dance I was never in choir um and I love I guess really all things creative I I, I enjoy pretty much anything in the creative world but I also love learning I love learning new things and I was the kid who enjoyed doing essays in high school so <laughs> amazing you're a singer how did you get into such an intense job What's the story behind you? That is a great, you're really good at this, Laylee. I'm impressed. Um, that is a great question. The real thing is that I did not plan to ever get into this career. Um, you know, it, I, the music world for the, for the Jewish women looked very different when I was a teenager. So I had a very different vision. We weren't, you know, people weren't really doing massive high level concerts or you know it wasn't really something that I had to aspire to which is part of why I love that it exists now because I love that it exists for um younger girls to aspire to and to realize that they can do in a kosher way um I didn't really ever plan to do that I was maybe going to be a music therapist I, I actually had no idea what I was going to do with my life I was going to be a music therapist I was you know very much taking it a little bit at a time and when uh the very long story short is which I'm sure a lot of you know by now is that a couple of years ago about three and a half uh, almost four years ago I woke up super hoarse and I lost my voice for a couple of months I developed nodules which are uh, growth on my vocal cords which you can hear now actually they're a little bit inflamed today uh because of my allergies but um and my doctor wanted to remove them. And it was a long back and forth, but um, it was a very big wake up call for me to realize that everything that I've had is always has always been from Hashem, but that maybe I wasn't really using it to the best of my ability because I believe that we're all put on this world to look inside ourselves and say, what did Hashem give me? And now that I have that, what can I do to make the world a better place with it? How can yeah. I inspire other people? How can I uplift or bring joy to other people? And I, don't know that I was really using my voice to the best of my ability. I didn't really know what to do. So I made a bit of a promise to Hashem that if he would allow me to, uh, like I said, my doctor wanted to remove my 
the growths, which could impact my ability to sing. And I didn't want to go that route. So mm-hmm. we were trying a different medical route. And I made a promise to Hashem right then and there that if he were to give me my voice back without doing the surgery, I would go ahead and use it for good things. So I didn't have a plan. I did not say, oh, and I'm going to put out songs and I'm going to do concerts. I didn't have any of that as part of my plan. And I always tell those people, uh, you know, you don't always have to have a giant plan in your mind of what you're going to do and how you're going to get there. Just start, start, take the first step, go a little bit, do a little bit. And then the next thing you know, Hashem, Hashem will do it together with you. And um, I opened up my Instagram page and I was first just sharing, you know, cute little covers. It was actually right when COVID hit. So I think the timing was good because people were home and looking for inspiration and bored and isolated. And I started off just sharing covers. Then I put out IA with my dear friend, Bracha Jaffe. That took off in a way we did not really expect. And it really just started blowing up. And then people started, you know, calling to hire. And I was didn't know what to say and then I put out my next song Zachreinu and then it kind of went up from there with Never Alone and with um, Holding On and 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 Fire and, and, and Mama and it's just it's been an amazing journey I've been able to um, not only you know share music with people but also to get to really meet and interact with so many incredible women and girls across the world um, wow. through my music and it's been a really big success and I, I feel very grateful so that's my background story. That's so beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Can you please describe to us what preparation for a music video and like singing on stage looks like? <sighs> oh, goodness. Well, actually, it's interesting that you're saying that with the singing on stage, because I actually um, I just did a show, uh, I think my biggest show ever in New York. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, that was uh, the show on March 8th in New Jersey Pack, which I don't know if you heard about it, if you saw we had uh, 3,000 women and it was beautiful and a 30 piece orchestra. And it was, it was really fantastic. Whoa. Yeah. And um, for that, for that uh, show, I actually had a film crew the whole day of the show filming how, you know, just what goes on the day of the show, getting ready. And that video is coming out soon. So that will really, it's going to be on my YouTube channel. That's going to give you a really, uh, a real bird's eye view into what goes on. Um, in terms of preparing for a concert, I mean, there's a short answer, there's a long answer. The first thing is always, before anything, remembering that everything is in Hashem's hands. And just really, I mean, that's with everything in life. But when things don't go wrong, when things go wrong, because things will go wrong, um, just to surrender to Hashem and say, okay, I, you know, I need your help here. Um, and yeah. you just remember not to be perfect. And you know, there's obviously that part in terms of like physical preparation. I personally have to take a lot of care of my voice because I have a lot of medical issues with my voice. So I work with my voice therapist, uh, you know, a few times a week before a show, I do a lot of vocal exercises. I work with my voice teacher. I take a a visit to my otolaryngologist, which is my voice doctor to kind of, you know, monitor where my voice is holding. I'm very careful to do, I have a very specific regimen of things that I have to do to keep my voice in check. Um, you know, yeah, I have to stay away from specific foods that could uh, cause acid reflux. I have to, I I steam my vocal cords. I, a lot of different things. I try to drink a lot of water. I try to sleep a lot. Uh, There's that part. Um, then there's obviously the prep, which is like, for me, I think the favorite part is choosing the songs, which is, yeah, it's difficult, but it's a lot of fun. I, I generally, you know, for me, my shows are very much about the audience and it's an interactive experience. So it's not so much about me performing and you listening. It's more about us kind of enjoying the music together. So that's a big piece when I, uh, when I pick songs, that's a big thing that I want to make sure most of the audience is going to know that every, almost yeah. every single, song. because you know, that, that that's a big piece. So we have a lot of fun and it's hard because it's like, you have so many songs you want to choose, but you know, we kind of pick something for, to cover each base. Some, some songs for the oldies and some songs for the very current uh, music and some things that are more emotional and some things that are more, you know, and then we, then we also try to bring in specific production moves, things that are going to keep the concert exciting. Um, yeah. Something like picking a child soloist or having even the, you know, even the fact that like on my show we just did now, for one of the songs we had the cello um, which is a, like a big instrument. She, the cellist came down um, from the orchestra and kind of sat with me in the front. 
just oh, to wow. change things up a little bit, we had um, Bella Levitan, who's A.B. Rottenberg's daughter, um, join me for the A.B. Rottenberg medley with different things. Um, obviously, surprises. I love surprising people. So surprises is always a very big thing. We had a lot of surprises at the show. One of the surprises that we had was we had a choir of 100 girls just pop out of nowhere. That's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That was really amazing. So there's that. And then, I mean, the big part of it is just, the, I mean, there are so many tiny logistical things. I have a fantastic, fantastic team between the producer the producer, and the, my manager and my secretary and my, my amazing people that help me. Um, I mean, the tiniest details you wouldn't think of, like, for the kids choir, what socks are they wearing? Who's picking up those yes. socks? You know, so those are things that I have a fantastic team and they've, they, they're they they're amazing and I like to be very hands-on. Yeah, there's a lot of prep. This show that we just did, I think, mm. was about six months of prep. That That's a really long time. No one would ever you know. know. People <laughs> go to the show thinking it's, it's all good. Everything's under control. Nothing's happening. Everything's going perfectly planned, you know, just planning a week before. But really, it's like six yeah. months. It can't be. It depends, obviously, you know, how big of a production it is. And on my end, of course, there's a certain amount of product of things that have to get done. But then there's the producer. I mean, the producer of this show is Ellie Gerstner. He's fantastic. EG Productions. And I mean, down to the fact of like how the stage is going to look. It's called like a set. Yeah. You know, they, they have to design that. They want to make a custom design of what what direction the lights are going to go in. And they actually will program which I'm sure you've noticed that the lights will go according to the song. I realize that. Yeah. The coloring, like if we're doing a more emotional song, maybe they're going to want the lighting to be more in the blue area. And it's going to kind of, you know, move in this type of motion, or if it's a very uh, fast paced song with a lot of, you know, energy, they're going to want the lights to change it for every beat. Yeah. The tiniest things, um, you know, and, having a good producer is, is a big part of that and and um just having a good team and and the best the most important thing is throughout all of it to just have positive energy all the time amazing what's something you really love about this job oh I <laughs> it's just that. well really it's interesting there's two things firstly i um i happen to love writing music and putting it out um I feel like it's a very unique thing. Um, it's a very special thing that I actually, it's like a connection that I have with Hashem. I feel like sometimes Hashem says like, oh, there's a certain message that I want to get across to certain people. I'm going to put this little idea in your head and you're going to put it out. It's not me. It's just Hashem. And I'm just, yeah. you know, and um, I love being able to kind of be that shaliach. I think it's very special. Um, I love being able to, um, sometimes I'll, I'll be going through something and I'll say, hey, why isn't there a song about to help people in this situation? And then I'll write it. Because if there isn't a song, then, then I'll write it. Um, yeah, that's also, that's special. Or things that I'm just passionate about or things that I believe in. Um, most of my songs kind of come to me out of nowhere. Uh, a lot yes. come to me when, when I'm driving, which is hard because we don't want to text and drive. And like type. So I'll pull over really quickly and jot down the lyrics. A lot of my songs come to me at like three o'clock in the morning. So I really do enjoy songwriting, uh, but the main thing that I love about this job is just being able to connect with so many amazing women and girls across the the world and to be able to hopefully be a part of getting things to them that they really need, you know, whether it's yeah. a specific message of inspiration or just a little bit of joy um, and just being able to sing and dance with them. I, it's the most magnificent um unifying feeling to um now I get to see it from the stage but just to even watch the women dancing with each other I, I see that a lot when I'm at a show and I'm looking into the audience and I see Hasidish women and and modern orthodox girls and non-religious and not Jewish and 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 Litvish and Ashkenaz and Monroe and Teaneck and Miami and Belgium and they're they're all just you know in this room and they just everyone becomes united through music and they dance together and it breaks down a barrier um, and really unifies people. And I love being able to watch that and to be a part of it. It's very special. It is. That's so special. Bao, I'm going to go to the songwriting, what you said. I write songs, Baruch Hashem, and I play oh, my wow. songs. Um, and I do the same thing. It's funny. It always comes at the worst times. That's first of <laughs> all. So whenever I think of something, I write it down and then I put it out. It's like I get the music for it, whatever. I think 
a lot of people ask me, you know what? A lot of people ask me, how does someone write songs? How they write the lyrics, how they find the tune? Because like, they think that the only tunes that are in, their, in your head are the tunes that like the songs, the songs that you know, right? Right. Can you hear that? How you write a song, how it comes to your head. It's a good question. Um, it's not always the same process. I happen to be much more comfortable in the lyric part. Like I really, I like I said, I loved writing essays. So you know, English was always my thing. Poem, like I was always, uh, I was like writing. Um, lyrics usually come to me first, generally. Sometimes the two will come to me at once. Like right now, there's a song that I'm coming out with. I don't know what it's called yet, but um, the the concept is, um, you know, when you lose something, you know, or you go through something, and then you become so much more grateful for it, and you thank Hashem for it, and you ask Hashem, "Can I have it back tomorrow?" When you go to sleep at night, and you wake up the next day, and you have it, and you're just so grateful, and you use you you use it for good things, and then you just say, you know, again, that you know at the end of the day, you say, thank you, Hashem, for everything that I've had. And can I have it back tomorrow? And it's this constant cycle. So let's say for me, that song, which is coming out soon, um, in Ritz Hashem, that song came to me, at, like, late at night. I don't know what time it was. I was getting ready for bed. And, you know, I, like I said, I've been through a lot to get to where I am now in terms yeah. of my voice. And I really, I was at a period of time, I thought I was never going to be able to sing again. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? Um, so having lost that and then getting it back, I have this extreme gratitude for my voice all the time. And I really, yeah. really try. I really don't take it for granted as much because it's something that I lost. Sorry. It's fine. Sorry. I get <laughs> a lot of people clicking in. Um, so, so there's that. Um, um, I basically, it was the end of a long day and I think I had been able to use my voice for, you know, I don't remember specifically, but maybe I got an email from someone that one of my songs, you know, helped them through a hard time. Yeah. And then I think I, I you know, it, I don't know what it, maybe I did an event that night and I felt like it was a really beautiful event. You know, it was the end of the day and I was just so beyond grateful because I really almost lost my voice. And then to get it back and to have a day where I just was able to use it for such beautiful things, I was so grateful. And um, so I was the song and I came home after a day of being able to really Baruch Hashem do so much through music. And I felt really, really grateful. Like I said, especially the biggest thing is that once you lose something, you realize just how grateful you are for it. And um, when you get to actually have it back, sometimes it's very very special and you get to really see the magnitude of what you just got back and you're grateful in a way that you weren't before and I started just like singing into the mirror this song I just it just it came into my head I also like to talk in song all day and uh, it was late at night but I ran to the piano and I quickly just banged it out and I wrote that chorus in about 30 seconds no uh, way yeah that's usually what happens it is <laughs> though yeah. And then um, I, I don't remember when I wrote the rest of the song. I think I wrote it over over a course of time, the rest of the song, like the verses. So that happens to me a lot where like the tune and the music will come together just like into my head, especially yeah. because damn all day. I'm just like. Da -da 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 -da. And the words will just come into, you know, and sometimes I'm having fun, but sometimes it really ends up being something worthwhile. Um, so, th so there's that um very often though I write lyrics all the time like lyrics fly into my head um I express myself a lot um in lyrics are really just they're essentially they're poems they're not really but yeah. kind of, and then sometimes after I've written the lyrics then I'll take it to the piano and kind of see like what emotion does this give me and which you know which chords and um, and then sometimes I have the opposite, like my newest song, Fire, um, that was a song, actually, this is a funny story. I wrote a song. I had written a song for something specific, about something specific. And then I went to the composer, Ellie Gerstner. I was going to write the lyrics and he was going to do the tune. The tune that he came up with, which I loved, was so, it just, it didn't fit. Music has a very spe specific sound. You can hear yeah. a tune 
right? You can hear a tune and just be like, ah, oh, this tune is so happy, or this tune is so sad, or this tune is so empowering, or this tune is so, you can, well, good music is that you can hear the message of the song in the tune without even hearing the words. So that if I was saying, let's say this song, for example, which is Fire, I heard this was the melody that he had played for me. He goes, dun, 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 dun. And the song that I wrote was really like happy and fun and cute. And I was like, no, this is, this is powerful. I just heard a lot of power, power in this. And I really sounds like a fight song to me. This sounds like it could be empowering. I went home and I wrote an entire new song to these lyrics. Whoa. That is my song Fire that just came out like a month ago, right before the show, actually. So I think everyone has different parts of their process. For me, it's usually lyrics first, melody. Sometimes they come together. It's all straight from Hashem and into the world. So it's, you know, what's your process? I'm curious to hear. <laughs> um. I don't really have a process. What I do is, this is what I do, okay? I've been, like, songs are based on what you've been through in your life, right? Like, that's what it usually is, especially, like, some of your first songs. So, actually, when I was in third grade, I had a notebook opened, and I was writing different songs, whatever. And then as a family, the family knew the songs, never put it out. And then, like, this year, last year, I started writing songs. I wrote, I think the deeper the situation is, the better the song. All the the best songs come from the most painful situation. Yes. 100%. Oh. So I've been going through a lot last year. I'm um, sorry. It's okay. Um, Where, like, I didn't know what to do with myself. There's been times where, like, I didn't want to live. There's been times. That's when I started Elevate Yourself, by the way. Um, what? I was like, that's when I started Elevate Yourself. Like, when I was going through a lot, I was on the phone with Rabbi Baruch Perlowitz. And he was telling me, do you know who he is? Of course, the father. <laughs> and he was telling me, he was like, Lily, you have so much energy. I want you to make videos. And in the daily videos, I want you to discuss like what you're talking to me about because it's very empowering. I want you to make it onto a video and send it out. And then That's me. But I think since I was already expressing myself through video, I decided I wanted to express myself. Um, well, I wanted to express myself since I was ready to express myself through video, which was nothing I ever done in my life. I, I can imagine. What, I listen to what people tell me. So when he told me that, I already started right away. And then I think since I was ready to express myself through video, I was like, you know what? Maybe I could do this through writing songs. So I started writing songs again. Oh. And then Baruch Hashem, I have a producer. Um, Who? <laughs> Kay Finn. Wow, Laylee, look at you changing. <laughs> I put out three singles. Um, and now I'm on my fourth. I love it. Where are they? Are they it's on like Spotify? Spotify? And it's on it's on Spotify, it's on 24-6. Um Laylee, very excited to take a listen to your music. Wow. I want to say that's fantastic because what you what you're doing with putting music is literally what I think what Hashem really intended is is and and the coolest thing is that this is actually what my most recent song about is um in some sort of way is that you can walk into any situation and you can walk out in the way that you choose to walk out right yes. so you were in that really tough situation and you could have left that situation in multiple different ways and you yes. made the choice of saying, you know what, I'm going to get out of this and I'm going to give over my message to so many other people. I'm going to inspire the people because of what I've been through. That's literally the lyric of my song. One day you will tell the story of all you overcame and it will teach the world around you how we all can do the same. That's you. Wow. That's you. Like, that. That's incredible. Yeah. Baruch Hashem. Um, I have another question for you. Sure. Who's somebody you really admire? Hmm. <laughs> I it's funny because I get asked this question a lot I admire I'm gonna say a few different in a few different categories okay so I admire in general and this goes back to this song and what you were just saying I admire people in general who are faced with a challenge 
and choose to make the best of their situation. Um, yes. to, to find purpose in their pain, because that's a really difficult thing to do. Um, especially when you're, you're in that like really dark place and it's, it can be really, really hard. I mean, we've all been through things in our lives and everyone's pain is valid, whether it's small or it's big. And, um, I've watched specific people, but I'm talking about really anyone go through something so hard. And I say, if I were them, I don't know what I would do. I, I, they're amazing, you know, and while we don't want to glorify pain ever, you know, nobody wants to go through that, but it's amazing to watch people in general go through something tough and they really just uh, take that scenario, that situation, they use it for good, whether it's that they're going to give over their story to other people. Um, this is actually ever since I put out the song Fire, this is a message that I've been getting a lot, which was what I intended for the message to be. People that are going through something in their life and they say, you know, someone actually just asked me now, she said, um, she, whatever, her and her husband are going through something very, very specific in, in terms of infertility and they just lost a child. And Aye. she said, you have a male version of the song because the song is really inspiring me. And I wanted to inspire my husband too. And I said, I'm so sorry, I don't have a male version of it, but that was the goal, you know? And I think it's people like that who, who, who say like, I'm going through something and it's so difficult and I'm going to use my situation to, uh, to, a, come out of this in the best way possible and B, see what I can give over to other people, maybe in my scenario. People who fight through hard things in general inspire me and people who are humble, humble and positive and kind. Someone specifically that inspires me is Avram Freed, which I've spoken about before. I find- By the way, me. pause. You are the fifth singer, singer I interviewed who said they admire Avram Freed. I'm just saying, no one else said anyone else except Avram Freed. That's so, <laughs> what does that say about you? Freed, I think you're doing something very right. Um, Avram Freed has been my, I think my number one inspiration since I was a kid. Um, and I think combination of the fact that he really, number one, he has his eyes on the goal. He doesn't get, he doesn't lose focus of why am I in this or, or, or what, you know, he, he doesn't get to, I, I, it doesn't come across that he gets distracted, but he just, he's like, I'm in this to inspire, to bring joy. And that he keeps his eye on that goal. It's very apparent. Um, and throughout all of it, he stays so grounded and humble. And it's something that I really, really admire. I think it's one of the most important things to remember that everything is from Hashem. And we could, you know, if someone's becoming egotistic because of something that Hashem gave them. They're losing focus. They're forgetting where this is all from. And mm -hmm. it's also a very off-putting um, characteristic, I would say. So that's definitely a huge, a huge, a huge a massive uh, inspiration for me personally. He's always been a major, and just in general, as a performer, he's also, he's just, he's fantastic. He's yeah. emotive, inspirational, and he also manages to really, um, to really stay, uh, not just humble, but to stay, just to stay humble and focused, and it's fantastic. Um, I would say another person that I just, I'm con, I, I like to say that I'm constantly inspired by her, especially because she's a, super close friend of mine and we're we're literally like sisters and um she's someone who shaped a lot of as I've known her for 10 years and as I've grown Whoa. up yeah she shaped a lot of my view on just what type of person to be and that's Shimi Adar or you know um beautiful sorry I got cut out there again that's Shimi Adar who I'm sure you know so Shimi and I go back to when I was a teenager and she was my age and we wow. became very she's a very, very special person in my life. Um, we People ask us all the time if we're sisters. We are not sisters in real life, <laughs> but we're very close. And she's really um, shaped the way that I view, um, the way that we're supposed to treat people and the way that, you know, we have the ability to make such an impact on someone um, just in the way that we smile at them and the way that we act towards them and the way that you just offer a kind word. Um, and like I said, I knew her growing up as a teenager. So she really, really, shapes me without without my knowing so I would that's, say her that's yeah. really beautiful how do you deal with pressure and stressful situations I believe in Hashem I trust in Hashem um no in all seriousness uh it's hard I literally just said yesterday like you know something big that we're working on and things are falling through the cracks um the biggest piece I always say is just if that's that's that song my song I believe in Hashem that's what it's all about when the pain is so complete and the heartache is so true I surrender God I give it up to you wow. throughout 
throughout a painful situation, a painful or stressful situation, um, we dig deep into the fact that we're human beings and we think everything's in our hands. So I always say just in general, I'd rather be poor and happy than poor. I'd rather be whatever it is and, and happy than just be in that situation. If that's the situation anyways, try to face it as best as possible with the best um, attitude that you can because you're in the situation anyways. But beyond that, um, it's hard. I'm a human being, you know, and we're all human. And as much as we can tell ourselves, stay positive. And, you know, it's sometimes really hard. And um, I, to me, very often, um, I, I get into a mode where I just say, okay, Hashem, I'm giving this to you. I, I don't know. I'm just human being. I'm going to do my best. And Hashem, I'm giving this to you. And um, and generally, it, it helps. It helps me a lot. And I sometimes envision myself physically giving my problem to Hashem. That's and just beautiful. Throwing it up like that. That's thank you. That's uh, that's my song holding on. If you ever watch the music video, you'll see the whole concept is people that have this bag. And this bag um, is carrying different things that are weighing them down, and eventually that, the yeah. bag turns into a right. It turns into a lantern, and they let the that lantern so go. Beautiful. And that's yeah. Thank you. So that's, you know, I do my best um, to, to just remember that I'm human and Hashem is on my side. And um, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's so amazing. Thank what you. is your most best and crazy memory throughout your adventure? Are you going to ask me to pick one? I'm that is pick one now. <laughs> Well, there's the best, there's the craziest, there's so many pieces here. Um, I think, honestly, a big thing right now, uh, like I would say like two big accomplishments to me specifically that were very special were this big show that I did in um, in New York, New Jersey and NJ Pack on March 8th. That was really special specifically because I had worked personally very hard towards it to make it happen. So when it finally did all come to fruition, um, obviously with Hashem's help and my team's help and everything, I really, I was... I can't say that I was proud of myself. I was just, I was so excited to see that if you really work towards something, sometimes it really can happen. And then you look back and you say, you know, the amount of times I had to say no to certain things to get to where I am, or the amount of times that people said no to me to, to get me to where I was. It was a very big moment. It was the first female Jewish, first female Jewish show there ever. And it was very, very special. Uh, I had the same feeling when I went to Europe, I did two shows in Belgium and it was just, it was, it was very special to just like realize like, wow, this is an amazing thing. Um, there, the greatest memories of, are always the, the little things that people don't really, it's the, it's the, you know, getting to bring a special needs child on stage and give her that attention and show the world how amazing she is. It's, hearing the little feedback from a little girl that says, wow. you know, I, I, I never thought I'd be able to do anything with my music, but now I see that I can. And, um, I, you know, it's the tiny things. Um, it's the fun parts. Like when I, I love surprising people. So I've done a lot of surprises when I get to surprise a bus with a girl and I get to watch her face just melt and get so excited. And when I, uh, when I was in Camp Agoda Midwest this past summer and they brought me in for a Shabbos, then a Monday Shabbos concert, and they hit me in a garbage dumpster dressed as an astronaut. Um, that, and that was, fun. I mean, I've had the craziest experiences, the craziest adventures. Wow. Um, and I would never be able to pinpoint one, but it's really, I think most of all, it's the little things. It's the, the, the emails that, 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 I think the biggest thing is just knowing when I make a difference, you know, when someone, okay. Yeah. Like I've actually someone, you know, told me recently, and I, I don't like to share specific stories unless I have people's permission. So that's why I don't really share the stories that people share with me, but I've heard just the craziest stories from people, um, how a specific song of mine helped them through something, you know, really, really tough, um, stories that have made me cry and cry and cry. Um, just, just, you know, I mean, people that told me like I was having surgery and I asked them to play your song, I believe in Hashem. Um, 
as they put me to sleep on the operating table. And that's, you know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, there was a, there was a, a story recently of a mother that told me that, um, her daughter, um, was very, very, very far from Yiddishkeit, a Hasidish woman. Her daughter is very far from Yiddishkeit. And she, um, said the one thing that she does have that connects her to Yiddishkeit is your music. And she, you know, and that really touched me. And then a year later, I actually met that woman again. And she told me actually, unfortunately, that her daughter had gotten cancer that year and she actually passed away. But she said, I want you to oh know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then she said, but I want you to know that, you know, the night that she passed away, she was playing your song on repeat. And I mean, oh my gosh. To have literally someone leave this world singing along or listening to the words, I believe in Hashem, I trust in Hashem. I, it's just something that you, I, I completely disassociate from, I don't take any credit for, I feel nothing but unworthy and I feel like it's such a schuss. So I think those stories, like those times when people tell me that really that my music has accomplished what I'm doing it for, you know, the, the reason I'm in this is hopefully to make a difference and to inspire and to uplift and to bring joy. So when I hear from people that it's done that for them, that's everything to me. That's beautiful. Shindi, what is the life lesson? that you can teach us? Oof. A life lesson that I can teach you or I can teach all of us is this. Okay. I, I love, by the way, I love your questions. You are such a brilliant interviewer. Is that what it's called? I'm really, really impressed. Um, I, hmm. a life lesson. I think the biggest thing that I always like to give over is two things. I'm going to say two things. Okay. So it's like, also, like I said, asking me to pick a, a favorite child, two things. Number one, you don't have to be big to accomplish big things. You can be little yes. and accomplish big things. And little can be taken in many ways. You don't have to have a degree. I don't have a degree. I don't have a college education. I'm good. Um, you don't have to have letters behind your name. You don't have to be super famous to accomplish something big. You don't have to be uh, super talented to accomplish something big. You don't have to be, uh, you know, have an amazing team or or so many resources you have something huge and that is you you are massive just by being you you are essentially something so so major and so worthy and no matter how little you feel no matter how unworthy you feel no matter how untalented or unprepared or unqualified you feel you have the ability to do the greatest biggest things and the only thing that's standing in front of that is your own mind and you have not yes. like right and yeah. you have to not find get in the way of that and you have to really just you know sometimes Hashem is nice to us because if I would have said to my mind hey um so we're gonna go put out some music and we're gonna try to do huge shows with thousands of people my mind would have said who are you kidding are you crazy yeah so Hashem was extremely kind to me in the sense that he did it in a very slow process my brain was tricked and didn't really realize what was going on until suddenly we woke up and I said what do you mean this what okay so my brain is tricked but usually when we say like let's say someone's a really i don't know really talented artist and she wants to start selling her art you know what her brain is gonna do her brain is gonna get are you kidding me you're just a kid or or even a grown woman who are you you're not qualified you didn't go to art school look at that <laughs> your brain will naturally get in the way and you know what that is it's not really your brain it's really your yatahara and the reason yes. is the yatahara knows that you have so much good that you can give to the world and he's scared. He's scared because what happens if I let Laylee get out of that dark place? She's gonna make videos, she's gonna interview, she is gonna bring so much inspiration to the world. I cannot allow that to happen. Yeah. I make her doubt herself. I have to tell her that it's not worth trying. I have to because otherwise she's gonna try. You know what's gonna happen if she's gonna try? She's gonna succeed. And I'm gonna be in trouble because there's gonna be more good put into the world. I don't want more good put into the world. I'm the Yitzhahara. I, I just want everyone to be sad and not doing good things. So I'm going to make her doubt herself. I'm going to make other people doubt her. I'm going to make other people say, you don't know what you're doing. Sometimes we have that. Sometimes it's not the voice inside our own mind. It's people around us that don't support yeah. us. And it's the Yitzhahara will do anything to get at you, to really get you to stop doing good because he doesn't want you to do good. Um, you know, beat him up guys beat him up with your fists and show him and you know just take that first step don't you don't have to take a giant plunge and start buying art galleries or 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 you know selling out madison's for garden but just take 
what would be one step and then take one more step and one more step and next thing you know you turn around and you're miles away from that starting point and you've changed the world wow. and gotten there is by doing it yourself by telling yourself that you can so that's really the, the first and most important thing I do I want to give over um, to anyone that's listening to this don't let anyone stop you don't let your own mind stop you don't let you know go for it if you have something and believe me when I tell you that you do have something um, get out there and, and go and, and make the world a better place and that's that's the second thing that I'm going to say is really to, to dig deep within yourself and think what did Hashem give me that I can use well, Hashem gave it to me for a reason you know and I always think that I'm like imagine I never had that that turning point that process where that doctor you know, I don't think you'll ever speak properly again and I said like, oh, you know imagine that I probably the rest of my life not not hold on <laughs> No, that was FaceTiming me. That was actually Shimmy. <laughs> Speaking of, um, I'll, uh, now I lost my thought process because I have ADHD. Give me one second. Oh, yeah, I always think about that. I, I say, like, imagine I had never taken that plunge. I w- none of my songs would be out and I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I would probably be, I don't know what I'd be doing at the office. Maybe I doing something else but I wouldn't be doing this and um wow take 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 a uh a look inside yourself when Dave I'm coming okay okay I'm coming I gotta run Lady, okay you're fantastic you're amazing I feel so privileged to have gotten to know you I'm excited to hear your music thank you and- so much for coming on all right, Shady Butzker, thank you so much for joining this beautiful one. an amazing hour yourself with you. Leave you all here for more ADs and videos, please. What's up the number below? 5164-8581. And don't forget to elevate the planet. To be added to the email chat, please contact the number 541-604-8581.